What is going on everyone? Today was one of the craziest and just weirdest days in the stock market that we have seen in a while. You can see by looking at the chart right now, Bitcoin has been all over the place as some crazy news came out after the market closed and how the SEC Twitter account was hacked and it's a whole big story. So we have a lot to talk about today, especially related to the Bitcoin slash SEC slash ETF approval news, as well as some other important things. But Tom, let's just get right into today's episode. Yeah, it was pretty crazy, Mike. Like the overall market today, uh, you know, it, it moved up a little bit. A few stocks started running. NVIDIA made another all-time Hi, so I want to mention that. That was awesome to see as they ran up to around 542. But the big news was the Bitcoin approval, or I should say the uh, the, <laughs> the lack of it. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the false approval, the lack of an approval. Guys, this is pretty insane. So the SEC Twitter was hacked, and we actually saved the exact uh, post that they made here where they're saying that the SEC grants approval for Bitcoin. They made a post on Twitter for it, and it started going viral all over the place. We saw it on CNBC and everywhere. Here's actually one of the CNBC articles before it got corrected, and then here is the correction article. Um, it's pretty insane that this would happen to the SEC, Mike, but we've seen some of these hacks happen a little bit over the past year or so, I'd say, and it looks like Twitter is not the most secure out there right now. Gary Gensler had to come out and say that the Twitter account was compromised, so I don't know what to think, Mike. Like, sometimes I'm like, wow, like, uh, was it, you know, like, everyone's contemplating, like, what's real anymore, right? <laughs> because it's like, uh, the news is always uh, being hacked now and everything's different. But let's go, Mike. I mean, uh, you know, it was fun for a minute while it lasted with Bitcoin, but now it fell right back off. Exactly. And to clarify, the Bitcoin ETF has not been approved. And you can see that, uh, craziness and uncertainty just by looking at the uh, Bitcoin chart as it's literally all over the place. But now it's to the point where it's like, you know, this uh, false information literally spread all over the internet within minutes. And like, uh, this is like an event that people have been waiting for for an update on for months now, you know, like everyone has been so excited about this event and it just, it kind of seems like this whole situation kind of like ruined it. So, you know, looking at Bitcoin, looking at Coinbase, looking at Mara over the next couple days, they are going to be some of the, uh, uh, biggest moving stocks in the market and they're already moving quite a bit in after hours right now. Yeah, they are. They're falling down a little bit. And we'll have to see how the news ends up coming out tomorrow. Uh, I don't know, Mike. Like, what do you think? I, you know, I know this is all speculation here, but the SEC, are they going to end up approving this tomorrow? Or are they going to end up delaying it now a little bit because of the hack? Or I'm actually really, really curious to see what happens here. And furthermore, um, you know, like whenever this got approved, we saw a bunch of articles, obviously, like on CNBC and stuff like that um, about like, you know, the approval being like a landmark in the adoption of cryptocurrency by mainstream finance and stuff. And now they have to deal with this hack situation. I mean, I don't know, Mike, it's, it's going to be a little bit worrisome here over the next couple of days. Definitely be on watch if you're holding calls on Mara and Riot, just in case, you know, something catastrophic happens or the SEC delays or something along those lines. Yeah. So when you're looking at like, let's say Coinbase or Mara or whatever you're uh crypto play of choices, <laughs> I'm going to say uh, be a little bit skeptical over the next couple of days. One, just given how much they're already up. Two, given that a lot of the hype has been kind of ruined. And also three, given that a lot of times when we see highly anticipated runs like this, there's so much hype before the event. But a lot of times when the event passes, a lot of that hype goes away, uh, you know, hence the saying, buy the rumor, sell the news. So I'm not necessarily saying that Bitcoin is going to tank or anything like that, but I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not too optimistic about, you know, going pretty long on cryptos at this point, especially given all the mess that happened today. Yeah, and like we might get lucky, you know, maybe the SEC will come out tomorrow and approve it and maybe, you know, the market will push Bitcoin way higher or something. But I don't know. It's definitely good to have that 
worry in the back of your minds right now and just to be a little bit careful because that news today definitely threw a wrench into things and I would say Mike like Coinbase is on watch for me because it's actually starting to get down quite a bit uh, if we go out to an hourly chart it's approaching recent lows now and after hours which are at like 146 and then 144 so if we start to break this key area of support I mean you know the floodgates might open and we might see a, a bigger push down so be careful especially in pre-market tomorrow and I'm sure that we're going to see a plethora of news coming out about this tonight so keep that in mind i'm sure there's going to be a few announcements over the next uh, few hours or so you know it now tom another thing i want to talk about is uh, the market overall and uh, so far it hasn't been bad this year but it definitely hasn't been as good as uh, 2023 closed out and i saw a pretty interesting chart today that basically showed that when you have a negative first five days in the market that that can actually be a pretty big warning sign not only for the rest of January and the rest of the first quarter but also for the rest of the entire year we could see all of these instances where the first day first five days was negative and we can see that you know Looking at the data, um, when you have a negative first five days, January only ended up positive 34.6% of the time, which is definitely uh, relatively low. And the average return for January when you have a negative first five days is actually in the red. Yeah, it is. And that's actually a pretty big thing to see, Mike. And I'm actually surprised is that the first five days have been red as often as they have been, right? Like, I would say that's a fairly common thing to see, uh, you know, for just to see five red trading days in a row is fairly rare, but for it to happen, like, at the very beginning of the year is pretty uh, pretty weird here, but it's definitely interesting, Mike. Only green in January, 34.6% of the time after the first five days are red. That's a pretty crazy stat, so we better watch out for January, and that overall market is pushing right back up towards that high of the year, getting close to the all-time high again, so for tomorrow, I guess the big question is going to be like, hey, like, is NVIDIA going to keep running up to highs and are, are these tech stocks going to follow or are we going to start to see the market collapse a little bit tomorrow and maybe trade a little bit lower back into that range it was in from uh, from last week? So uh, it's going to be interesting tomorrow, Mike. The market is uh, kind of flat right now, and I'm curious if the Bitcoin volatility will even somehow leak over into SPY and other stocks out there as well because, you know, even like NVIDIA and AMD are affected by Bitcoin a little bit just given that they uh you know are used for mining and stuff yeah i mean at the end of the day when you have a lot of volatility in an asset as big as bitcoin you know it just uh shakes the whole system up a little bit so i really wouldn't be surprised if we saw a little bit of uh extra volatility with the market overall given this recent news but before we move on i want to talk a little bit more about the uh first five days chart because i have a couple more interesting things to say about it and what i notice is like one you know the last time we had a negative first five days you know that was in 2022 and obviously that didn't end too well as the market ended up down almost 20 percent on the year but you know to be fair that was a you know, pretty red year to begin with. But what I also notice is that when you do look at the calendar years that finish red, given the first five days of the year are red, a lot of them are like pretty decent, like red years, like 14%, 11%, 29%, 13%, 38%. Like these are some pretty big uh, down years. And of course you have a couple years in there that are only down like 3% or so, but it looks like when the years are red, like you know, they're, they're, they're pretty red. Yeah, especially lately. Like, I can't believe 38%. Well, that is 2008. But even 2022, 19% going back to the 70s. And what else is interesting, Mike, is this was like whenever we were also um, seeing, especially in like the 70s and early 80s, we were starting to see that inflation get pretty high, right? And we were seeing uh, the rates and the yields going crazy so I'm curious like if maybe that's playing a bit of a role now too and it just has some more similarities there but very interesting chart and hopefully we don't end the year down 20% Mike that would be a, a pretty rough year again just like 2022 but then again I will say 2022 was awesome for me because I got to buy up a bunch of dips so I don't know it's a double-edged sword right like I want the market to go up but then again uh, for the long term I wouldn't mind buying the dip 
Yeah, exactly. So very interesting stuff there. And Tom, Walla, this week has already been more interesting than I could have thought, given all the crazy news that has, ha that has happened over the past couple of days. We also have uh, the start of earnings season creeping up, as well as some important infl inflation data later in the week. So fill us in. Yeah, Tilray reported today they ended up not really doing too well on the day overall, but on Friday, that's really where we're going to get the big earnings with all the banks. JP Morgan, um, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, even BlackRock on Friday. So be ready for those reports. Well, I'll say this, Mike, as long as somebody doesn't get hacked, be ready for some <laughs> reports. Uh, I, I don't know what to think anymore. You know, I'm scared. Are the earnings? even real like it's uh <laughs> like what's going on but um yeah and then going over to the economic calendar side of things we can see we have the inflation rate here on thursday january 11th one hour before the market opens so be ready for that we all know inflation has been huge lately and they're inspecting it they're, well they're expecting sorry inflation to actually uptick a little bit the last reading was at 3.1 percent the consensus is 3.2 and the forecast is 3.3 so let's Hope it doesn't rise much more than that or else it could cause a lot of volatility but be ready one hour before the market opens thursday and we're even getting some job numbers too good stuff all right sorry tom but i'm just sitting here thinking and i'm just looking at the sec's twitter post and i'm just thinking to myself like how in the hell did you guys get hacked on like the most important day and the most important announcement over like the past year related to the sec like i don't know it's just kind of weird like like, how, like, they didn't take any extra precautions or, like, were the hackers just, like, you know, god-tier level hackers? Like, I don't get it, but I just think it's kind of weird. Like, like they had one job to, like, make sure this post on this specific day was protected, and uh, they definitely fumbled. Yeah, and they're doing all this bullshit, like not approving these, uh, not not approving the ETFs because of all the regulations and making sure everybody's safe and all this. They need to worry about themselves. It looks like, honestly, uh, the SECs can't even keep their own Twitter uh, going. So I don't know, Mike. I don't know if I even want them regulating Bitcoin at this at this point. <laughs> all righty. Well, let's get right into some uh, setups for tomorrow then. <laughs> right off that note, but uh, with the first stock out. I'm watching for it tomorrow we have meta and i am looking at it in a bearish way so um the company has been amazing over the past year or so i own this stock for the long term but you know even as a long-term investor of this company it's overbought i mean it's just it is what it is there's also some giant resistance around this 360 dollars level and i am expecting a rejection off of this resistance which is exactly what happened today but i would like to see a break below like 355.40 uh, and then a continuation down. So I'm going to have some close eyes on this one for tomorrow and I'd love to uh, play the pullback. Yeah, and I like that level you gave right under that wick from this morning. So let's see that breakdown tomorrow and maybe uh, trade a little bit lower. Hopefully, you know, the market just doesn't blast up the new all-time highs here. I have a feeling we might see more chop than, you know, what we've seen so far this year. Um, with my next play, I'm going with an interesting one that might throw people off a little bit, and it's General Motors. I've seen on the daily chart they're actually having a pretty good move back to the upside. They've been having a lot of hype with their EVs to end the year last year. They're starting to move a little bit. Uh, today and uh, as they go into tomorrow I'm going to watch this daily chart for a nice continuation up if we continue to break uh, above like 36.65 36.75 I'm going to look at calls tomorrow um, up to those recent highs and if not even higher so let's go General Motors they're on one hell of a run right now and hopefully they can keep breaking out in the short term they're definitely up a lot but whenever you zoom out a little bit there's uh, there's quite a bit more room than I think people realize all right, sounds good. Um, another stock I'm watching pretty closely is Netflix, and it is also to the downside. And it's uh, pretty similar to the meta setup. You know, uh, the stock is just overextended, and it is, uh, you know, weakening in the short term. So I would like it to get back to, like, this 478 area. And then uh, I would just like to ride the momentum lower. But either way, it's close on watch tomorrow to the downside. 
Yeah, I like it, Mike. You know, I think some of the tech stocks have a lot of room down. So let's go. Let's see some great movement. And with my next play, I'm going with a nice bullish setup here, with the, which is CCJ uh, Cameco. You know, it's one of those uranium stocks. We've talked about it a lot this year. And today it had it quite the turnaround. Uh, they, they've been dipping a lot recently. And today had a, they had a very nice move. So I'm going to look for a nice continuation to around like 45.50 or 45.60 tomorrow. Uh, make sure you see that momentum early on though this stock can get pretty wild especially like we saw this morning around 10 a.m central time like geez mike like that uh that run was nuts today on Cameco, and i know ccj has a lot of hype behind it too given that uranium has seen a lot of upwards pressure over the past couple years no doubt well good stuff there and let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow and with the first one we have peloton to the upside and tom this one was uh, showing some good potential yesterday and it moved up in a good way today but it just got uh, smacked right down yeah, it did amazing. I was watching it. It opened. I was like, wow, it's up to seven. I thought it was going to keep going. But looking at it for tomorrow, Mike, if it can break back above 630, I think we can look at it back up. It's getting close to that $6 support. So if we end up breaking 630, let's watch for a recovery. Boom. With the next one, we have Amazon, but to the downside. AMZN. Yeah, there's a nice intraday support end of day here right around 150.60. So if we're able to get back under there, go ahead and look at puts to the downside early on. All right, and then with the last one, we have the mysterious again, Tom, TLT for both directions. <laughs> the mysterious, I love it. If they break under 96.50 again, go ahead and eye up those puts. I will say today it had a fairly decent pop, but if it can, if it can get above 97 tomorrow, then eye up those calls. All right, well, you guys heard Tom. We have the upside level for calls and the downside level for puts, and that is for TLT. Don't forget about the downside level on Amazon and the upside level on Peloton. But it's now about that time for today's big money $1.266 million trade of the day. And we are looking at Chewy again. So this is one of the very few instances where the big money trade from today is also the big money trade from yesterday. And it had a pretty good day overall, but it is just kind of all over the place. And basically today, someone dumped, we'll call it $1.3 million into the Chewy. 25 strike call options that expire on January 17th of 2025. We can see yesterday's big money play on the chart as well. Long story short, Chewy's at a pretty good level. It's a pretty volatile stock though, and it has a lot of potential. The risk reward's good, but if you're going to follow these setups, you have to give it the time that they need. It's like, if you think you're going to flip this tomorrow, uh, don't do that. It's not a good idea, but if you're willing to give it time and let the setup develop in the same way the big money traders are doing it, then it can be good. But uh, just make sure if you follow it, give it the time it needs. Yeah, I like it quite a bit, Mike, and it did well today off support. I know that, uh, you know, we're only one day into a play that expires in like a year, but uh, but either way, it was a nice little pop back up today. And uh, I think that we could get a nice continuation over the next few days as well. It's a pretty good growth stock and it's on a decent dip. So let's see uh, Chewy continue up here for the rest of 2024 you know i know the year just started but let's hope it's green for chewy right what i like is that chewy doesn't necessarily follow the overall market either it only has moderate correlation to spy so if the market goes flat or dips chewy could still do well and i hope chewy can do well mike i, I actually like them as a company uh you know it's not every day that i actually like the company that we're talking about but with chewy i i you know their service is actually pretty awesome i'm sure a lot of you guys out there use them there we go. But Tom, tomorrow should be a very exciting day, you know, especially given the crazy news from the crypto industry today. Watch Coinbase, Mara, and Bitcoin very closely tomorrow. There should be a whole lot of volume and interesting movement with them. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. We post all the time. When you subscribe, you'll see our videos recommended to you more often. In each video, we go over the most important news, some best plays for tomorrow, big money, multi-million dollar hedge fund trades, and we cover everything you need so you don't have to spend the hours that we spend combing through a bunch of different data sources, news articles, and, you know, market data overall. So definitely make sure to subscribe. It takes like two seconds, but Tom, do you have any final thoughts before we close out? 
Yeah, let's hope that Bitcoin can weather this storm in the short term, right? Especially all the bulls out there. Uh, just keep in mind that, you know, Bitcoin's up quite a bit right now and there could be some volatility. So be very careful over the next few days with some of these stocks. But overall, Mike, today was a pretty good day. We saw NVIDIA make all time highs and this one's definitely going to be on watch for me again tomorrow as well. We're almost to 600, Mike. We just broke 500. We're already halfway there almost. Oh, boy. It'll be interesting. But we should have an exciting day in the market tomorrow. Let's crush it, everyone. And last but not least, I want to give a giant shout-out to today's member of the day, Rigo Raff in the Stocked Up Discord. You've been in the chat for a couple months now, and you've been a great member so far. So definitely make sure to keep it up. And besides that, guys, let's have an amazing rest of the week.